Everybody, this is Amanda Rose, your speaking success strategist. I am so excited. I'm here with Jeff Klein today, and Jeff has an amazing vision. He has really put together something that is incredibly beneficial to every person that wants to reach more people through the power of speaking and also increase their revenue. Say hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> too easy, too easy. Amanda Rose, sorry about that. No, that's okay. I'll just share a little off note is my clients, I'd be doing workshops and I would say, everybody grab your seat. And there was always somebody who would grab their butt. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not saying that anymore. I heard that way too many times. <laughs> so Jeff, please tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started in your business. Okay, I can do that. Um, I kind of joke that I came to speaking through the kitchen, like, uh, you know, how a band gets into, a, into their venues because I never set out to be a speaker. I never set out to be somebody who teaches and helps other speakers. But uh, I came out of college, I always wanted to make movies. And I came out of college with a theater degree and went right into the movie business here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, my, uh, my sister went to LA and did movies there. I stayed in Dallas and did a lot, of, a lot of TV commercials, a lot of corporate video, and learned a whole lot about how to make things look like they were one thing when they were actually something else, movie magic, right? And then I went into association management. I went to work for the association I'd been volunteering for, the Texas Film Association, which I didn't even know that was an industry, right, association. Mm -hmm. But I learned all about that industry and went from there into full-blown uh, film and video production. I worked with the Texas Rangers and Dallas Stars team. They were owned by the same people at the time. And we did their, we did the ball games and some TV shows and uh, some commercials. And then I worked for a minority business as a spinoff of that business. So okay. I learned about minority certification, which is another uh, thing that not everybody knows about. And then it was time to be in my own employee again. And uh, I started an ad agency and that turned into speaking and what I'm doing now, which is the speaker co-op which is an organization of people who speak that we help promote through our website and we help educate them through the back end of the website and help further education for people who speak uh, for their businesses primarily. This is a really interesting story because I myself never saw myself as a speaker and a speaker trainer, never. I was, I went to degree, I have a degree in social work. I thought I would be in that profession for the rest of my life. And at one point I actually wanted to change. So I took a job with a nonprofit organization and they didn't tell me that I have to speak in front of hundreds of people. Surprise. No experience. I was a horrible communicator. Uh, um, I had nervous laughter. So I would say something, I giggle afterwards. I mean, worst person to put in this position. And those are the times that we either rise to the occasion, right? We either step it up or we pull ourselves back. So I would love to know, and then um, I'm going to share this real quick because I have another question for you. Is sure. I, I got that gnawing inside of me telling me you're supposed to speak, you're supposed to speak. And then it was, oh, you're supposed to speak and speak, teach speakers. So those all kind of evolved is that little voice in my head that kept nudging me. How did you go? How did you make that leap? Like what made you want to go into the business of speaking training? Well, it was a couple of different things. Um, one was I never had any fear of speaking. You know, my, my first speech was when I was 13 for my bar mitzvah. And like a lot of Jewish kids, that you have to do that speech regardless of whatever fears you have. But uh, maybe that's why there's a lot of us in speaking. Because, <laughs> But uh, at any rate, um, after I started the ad agency, uh, a couple of years in, I saw other people that were speaking to promote their business. But I also was attending National Speakers Association meetings but not to be a member, I was attending as a vendor because I did videos and websites and speakers need videos and websites. Mm -hmm. so I was attending the meetings to get business, but I was getting the education. And every, every month at one of those Saturday morning meetings at NSA North Texas, I would sit there watching and I would say, be saying to myself, well, I could do that. Uh, that makes sense, I could do that. Well, why aren't I doing that? So I started, and I was also connected to an organization called CEO Space, where they asked me to start speaking at their evening events locally. So between them asking me and uh, NSA education, and then somebody else saying, hey, would you come 
share what you just shared at our meeting, it, it just started happening organically for me. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's also uh, how I discovered extra profit centers because I had somebody call me and say, hey, we want you to come back and four of us want to pay you to do a workshop on what you just spoke about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I, I will say yes to that. <laughs> and I will, I will be open to receive your money to help you with your elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, because yeah. It, many times it springs off of something else, right? It was just like me, right? I started yeah. going, okay, I think I want to be a speaker. I love this whole thing. I'm really good at it. And I, you know, obviously have some skill sets and some talents and some gifts around it. Then it was like, well, wait a minute, others need your help. And so let's kind of talk about the speaker co-op as well, because that's a big platform that you help people with. So tell us a little bit more about speaker co-op. Well, what happened was uh, at the um, end of 2005, a few of us who were speaking to promote for various reasons. One, I was speaking to promote my business. Uh, another guy was speaking to sell a book. Another guy was wanted to be a professional speaker. Uh, somebody else was a financial advisor. And the, the last person was a woman in the uh, beauty business who was wanted to build her team and, and saw speaking as a way to do that. And we just got together to share all the other places we'd spoken with each other. And then it was like, well, somebody said, well, how do we, how do we maximize this? How do we get more of this, what we're doing right now? And I said, well, why don't we start a lunch and invite all the people we know who are speaking? And they said, great idea, Jeff. Why don't you start a lunch and we'll support you? And the truth of Monterose is it never would have happened if they hadn't supported me. Mm -hmm. But it became my thing because I was the one who stepped up and, and set up a venue and used an Evide and later and bought Meetup. And, and uh, we, the first meeting in 2006 in January, we had 50 people show up who mm -hmm. all, and I was, we, I had no idea what to do with a room full of 50 people. I mean, we had, we had two people scheduled to speak for 15 minutes each. But we didn't have time to introduce everybody in, 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 in the time slots we had allotted. So I had to actually get real inventive and I created the unique introduction that we do it, and we still do at the speaker co-op meetings where you don't get to do a 30 second commercial. You get about 10 seconds, you tell us two, your, two of your topics, two groups you wanna to speak to and your name. And, and, we, and it, we, it actually, we made it fun because if you didn't, do the format, everybody in the room would go topics, groups, hey. And so we, we self-trained a room full of people to do something different. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's a great concept. Really great concept. And our focus, you know, it, it's, we have, we, we welcome people from all, all areas of speaking, but our focus is on those people who are speaking to get clients. So I think this is an important transition in our conversation too, because this is, it ha comes up with me all the time, because there is a difference before some people want to speak because they have a passionate message. Yeah. Some people want to speak because they know they need to increase their business. And I think it's the combination of the two of them that makes it really powerful. So many people think, and this is my personal viewpoint, they go to Toastmasters, so they understand the business of speaking. My personal opinion, not at all. It's completely different. No, Toastmasters is about the presentation itself. And NSA is about the business, the profession of public speaker. And speaker cops right in the middle. Mm -hmm. We place ourselves in the middle because we draw from both sides. And our focus is on getting results from your speaking. That's right. And Zig Ziglar, yeah, Zig Ziglar said there's no such thing as a free speech. <laughs> and that's, and that's what I, I, everything I do is based on that. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of talk a little, elaborate a little bit more about what look, what it looks like to be in the business of speaking. So somebody's a business owner or an entrepreneur or wants to be a speaker. Let's talk about the business side of it. So what things do they need to consider in the business side of it? Um, they need to have a lot of the tools that a professional speaker has. In other words, they need to have a marketing piece that shows them as features them as a speaker. They need to add a speaker tab to their website. And they need to come up with clever topic titles that'll attract people to book them as opposed to somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and then the other pieces that, that I, I really uh, advocate are to create a couple of other things that, that'll uh, offer extra revenue 
along the way. So for example, my first product was a CD. And that's, uh, darn it, I thought it was right there on the shelf. Um, but at well, any rate. We'll imagine that it is. Oh, I yeah. see it right there. <laughs> my, my first product was a CD that I sold for $20. Now, because what I understood, yeah, very good. What I understood was that about 20%, 10 or 20% of every room were real prospects to buy my advertising services. But everybody in the room was a prospect for a $20 CD on the topic I was talking about. So what I, and I learned that from NSA. And so I, I was leaving money on the table by not having a $20 thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people that I work with, the experts who speak, only get paid when they're working for their client, you know, accountants, attorneys, coaches, and we want to help them create money when they, when they're sleeping. Mm -hmm. And so info products is the key to that. And you know about back of the room sales and all that, all that speaking jargon. But what we try to do is help, <coughs> excuse me, help business experts add to those profit centers. Mm -hmm. So I actually have a little bit of slightly off topic. I just want to get your opinion. Yeah. So now we have moved so much into the downloadable format. Right. So I don't, I personally don't have, you know, don't carry products around with me anymore. And what's your thoughts on that? Do you need a physical product or? Well, it... I, you know, I sold, uh, here's, here's the, the, I sold the CD. Is that, yeah, it's reversed, of course. This is what I sell now. What I sell now is the MP3 and the ebook for the same price I used to sell the physical CD for. Yep. Now, I will say <clears throat> that I'm going to be getting some like USB drives with the content on it because I want to experiment and find out if I'm losing any sales by not having something to physically hand somebody. Yes. Yeah. And that's actually, it's much, it's less expensive. I hate to use the word cheap, less expensive to do that USB versus the physical product. Yeah. Right. And it's a lot less yeah. expensive to just do the download. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then for yeah. those that are listening that this is kind of new for you, think about when you may have ever gone to an event and somebody sold somebody in the back of the room, whether it was a book or a CD, those things aren't huge income generators. But as Jeff was sharing, you're still getting money from people that may have not taken the bigger step. So you're not leaving potential clients on the table. And that person might have bought the book or the CD and then realized they needed more help later. Like they had to get a little taste first. So it is important to have that lower priced item as well. So that's a really good point. Yeah. And it is going to go on their bookshelf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so whereas if you just, if you it's a worksheet, it'll go in a drawer somewhere if they keep it at all. But when you have those on that top shelf is all books by people I know. <laughs> I need to send you mine. <laughs> yeah, I'd love that. So it's I'd there love that. too. <laughs> and, and, and I turn my audio into an ebook first. Uh, I mm -hmm. still don't have a, print, you know, a, a, a full blown book, but that's coming soon. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people to do it. It's so much easy, easier now than it used to be. Uh, this reaction is way easier. And since we're talking about books, I'll often hear this. Well, I'll start speaking when I have my book. Yeah, when don't I do finish that. writing that book, which takes sometimes for people two to three years, doesn't need to take that long. Just saying, but why, what's your take on that when somebody says, I'll start speaking when I have my book, because that's going to be my credibility. Yeah, my, one of my nine laws to business speaking success is just do it. And that comes from because what happens in that person that you're talking about, we all know them. Perfect is the enemy of great. It is, isn't it? Yeah. 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 They do. They wait till it's perfect and, and it never happens. And the, and we're missing out on their, on their content. Right. And all that stuff is you can edit it. You can say you write a 60 page book. It's really not that many words or you take like for when I wrote my first book, I, what I did is I took all the tips that I had been writing for years, put them in a book and then looked at what was missing and said, okay, let me go ahead and fill in the gaps. My first book was called Pain Free Public Speaking. And I did workshops based on that book for yeah. years, for years, yeah. for years. And so it wasn't that difficult when I got out of my own way and I made a verbal commitment to somebody else that I would get this book done within two weeks. And you know what I did? Got it done within two weeks. Yeah. And if you're, if you're somebody who's writing newsletters every month, 
you've got a book already if you've been doing a newsletter for a couple of years. It's all there. Yeah. Or even just, you know, maybe write in a Facebook group, right? You write these long posts or these ideas. And if you just expand on what you've already written, or if it's really long, you don't have to. You have that knowledge inside of you. And the thing that uh, I think that we would both agree is the book does not make you a speaker. The book will help you with your credibility. It will help you get in front of more people, but that is all. And so it starts speaking now while you're working on your book. Yep. And your book is just a bigger business card uh, and it will open doors. Don't, I mean, I, I know that my business would be different if I had a book sooner. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the way my business is, but. Right. <laughs> yeah. See, if you don't need to, like, if you're in just position, you don't need to write the book. Right. But if you, but if you're not speaking, go out and start getting in front of audiences and also start work on your book at the same time. And mm -hmm. for me, I always tell people, but they want to finish writing the book. I said, the other thing is when you get in front of live audiences, you will get that th you will hear the things that they most want to know. You'll be able to refer to their struggles and their challenges. And that's only going to add more value and more credibility in your book. Absolutely. And record all your talks because that can go into your book too. Transcriptions were big. I, I wound up because, you know, I started teaching the 30 second elevator pitch and I was in, had an ad agency. So networking and advertising are connected. But over time, I wound up creating more and more content because people wanted me to come back and do a different topic. And I was teaching a six hour class on networking, one hour a week on the phone. And again, another product. Well, the recording of that is another product, but I had it all transcribed. And, mm -hmm. and the reality, uh, Amanda Rose, is I should have just sent that to an editor and turned that into my, net, my networking book. I just never got around to it. But six hours of transcription, that's a book. That's a book. It's just, it's just not a high priority for you. You've got many other things that you want to do. So, yeah. It really is. Yeah, the list, you know, <laughs> the things get, keep getting pushed down the yeah, list. That's right. That's right. That's right. So what is the, what do you think is one of the biggest things that somebody needs to do if they want to get into the business of speaking? Um, as, well, let me, let me qualify your question. As somebody <laughs> who becomes a public paid speaker or somebody who speaks to promote, they could do both. Let's say, let's say both because okay. great. That's good. I, yeah. I think you really want to do both. I think you want to have both tools in your toolbox because like in 2008, when the economy in the U S went, whoosh, what happened to all those paid speaking gigs? Right. Gone, right. Yeah. Vanished. <laughs> so you yeah, need to have other ways. Yeah. There were people who had, they'd been speaking on one book for 10 years and they had nothing else. Yeah. So, so I think the, the biggest answer is to have multiple ways to make money off your speaking. You know, is to sell your expertise and to be able to be eligible to get a speaker fee and have other products like books and, and, and audios and things like that. And workshops. Workshops mm -hmm. and webinars are easy money. I'm just going to say it that way because mm -hmm. you already know the content and you're just teaching each new person how to fit into your system. I've been teaching the 30 second elevator pitch for 13 years now. Wow. 14. <laughs> and, I, and, and when I originally started, it was a 90 minute class. And over time it became a two hour and it became a four hour. It became part of that six hour. And <laughs> guess what? Now it's a two hour class again. And I do it every, you know, once or once or twice a month. And I make a lot of extra money doing it because people still need it. And frankly, I, you know, I do a good job and they tell their friends mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it doesn't cost me any stress because I know what I, I know the content and I love working with people and helping them say what they do in a way that other people care. That's awesome. So if people wanted to find out more, like, do you have something that would be really exciting for them to go get from your website? Something free? I have a, I have a, a free, well, I always have free content on speakercoop.com. Right now, one of the free things is a talk called um, Business After the Applause. Because a lot of people do really well getting the audience to love them, but they're not turning, they're leaving without any, any customers. So business after the applause is a free download 
at speakercoop.com slash education. And at that same link, there's a couple other free things like a letter of agreement to use when you speak. So you have a contract and there's a couple other things. There's a, our book panel from November is in there as well. Uh, lots of info about doing your book. So great. And what's that, what's that URL again, Jeff? Speakercoop.com slash education. And it Perfect. will ask you to opt in and share your email address, but it, then it's free. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's great. Jeff, is there one final thought that you would like to share with our, with our viewers? You know what, I'm gonna go back to the same answer to one of your earlier questions, Amanda Rose, and that's just do it. <laughs> Don't keep coming up with excuses. Just get out there and start speaking. There's hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of groups who need a speaker every single day. That's Just right. And start doing it. That's right. Actually, I do have another one more question for you that I, that came to my mind and I forgot to ask it. I do get this all the time. If a person is new, they'll say, how much do I charge for a presentation? What would your answer be? Um, for the rotary circuit, the networking circuit, they don't have any money. They're never going to pay you. <laughs> but I suggest putting something in the neighborhood of Twelve to fifteen hundred dollars as the fee that you're waiving to speak at that lunch or that breakfast. Yep, and you have to make sure that if you're speaking for free, that you still get revenue from that presentation, or and or a huge credibility. Maybe that's somewhere that you really want to speak, mm -hmm. and it's a place that you would think would look great on your media packet or one sheet on your website. Then you do it. Mm -hmm. It has to either it has to have some kind of revenue generating generating or credibility. And I tell, I am agree with you is Jeff, is that, you know, if somebody says to them, how much you charge to present, don't make it 200, $300, because by the time you've done your math, you've made 20 bucks an hour on that right. presentation. And you're also, if you charge that much, what are they going to think about the value that you have to offer? Right. Very little. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean if they have an honorarium of $200, you don't say yes to that. Yes. You can always go down. You just can't go up. <laughs> and the big question there is what's your budget? And then again, nine times out of 10, it'll be, well, we don't, we're a nonprofit and we'll, and they'll start making excuses. And what you respond with is not, yes, you respond with, tell me about your group. And let's see if it's something that makes sense for both of us. Yep. Perfect. That's a great answer. Love it. Love it. Can you go ahead and give your the website for your free gifts? Sure. Speakercoop.com. <laughs> Speakercoop.com. And that's C-O-O-P without the hyphen. Speakercoop.com slash education. Perfect. Well, Jeff, you have been an amazing guest full of tons of valuable information. And please, everybody, go ahead and go to speakercoop.com forward slash education and get Jeff's free gifts. I'm going to go get them because I want to see what you're doing in the networking introductions. I bet it's off the hook. Awesome. 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 All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Love to you all. Bye, everybody.